Pat with Pat's Two Cents, reading Jeremiah chapter 9. Oh, that my head was water and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Wow. I'm going to go back to Isaiah chapter 8, 11, and 12. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. God help me with this message. Um, listen, what God wants us to be very aware of is there's judgment coming. As the song goes, there's judgment in the gate. There's a part where it says, our money says, in God we trust, yet we can't pray in schools. Judgment, judgment is, is at Hey, listen, listen to, these, to words. these words. Our money says in God we trust, yet we can't pray in school. The golden rule has changed. He who has the gold makes the rules. There's going to be a judgment day, not in the courts or halls. When the first shall be the last, and the mighty fall, there's just in the game. We know that God is about life, and that more abundantly, and he tells us to be fruitful and multiply, yet we want to kill our babies. He tells us not to be drunk with wine, yet half the population lives off of alcohol. They calm their nerves with alcohol. They go to sleep with alcohol. They wake up to get rid of the hangover from the alcohol they had the night before. We don't realize how much we have lost control of our lives. We have willingly relinquished control. We have willingly said, forget it. I'm just going to do whatever because it takes a lot more effort to line up with God's ways. A lot more effort. It's like getting up fighting gravity. Gravity wants to pull you down. That's what sin does. Sin acts like gravity. It weighs you down. It pulls you down. It's easier to fall down on your behind than it is to get up off the floor from a prostitute from a prostrate position. It's easier to do that. So we do the, uh, we take the easy way out. It's too hard. It's too difficult. Too much responsibility. Too much discipline. And God is not happy with the way this world handles itself. Oh, that my head will water and mine eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them. For they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. And they bend their tongue like their bow for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil. And they know not me, saith the Lord. Take heed, every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. And they will deceive every one his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. That's another way of saying it. Wear themselves out, committing sin, sin after sin after sin. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. That's like Isaiah saying, I live amongst the people with unclean lips. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. 
through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in his heart he layeth his weight. Shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Okay, listen, before I go any further, I just have to do this. And I pray I'm doing it under God's unction. I say to the country of America, to this nation and any other nation that has an ear to hear, righteousness exalts a nation. Not money, not power, not clout. Righteousness exalts a nation. And as long as a nation chooses to turn its back on righteousness and holiness, the nation is literally flushing itself down the toilet. So when all hell breaks loose in your country, if all hell breaks loose in this country, don't blame God. Blame sin. And everyone that's bet on sin. From the top to the bottom, from the powerful to the weak. We sit up there and have a judge have to go through a trial because he had the Ten Commandments on the front of a courthouse. But people are up there selling babies, selling children, sexual trafficking. And we turn a blind eye because they grease our palm with enough money to keep us happy. So we prosper in our way based on lies, based on treachery. And you think God is forever going to turn his back and ignore it. Payday is coming. And that's a warning to this country and any other country that's head up by treacherous behavior. Payday, payday is here. And one day you're going to look up. And you're going to be scratching your behinds trying to figure out what went wrong. How did all this become of us? How, how, how did all us, how did all of this befall us? It's your own doing that brought it. That's my warning. A lot of you need to stop what you're doing before God lifts up a standard. When God lifts up a standard, baby, can't no monkey in hell and can't no high person in the country, can't no Illuminati, none of these elites, nobody can stop the hand of God. Once God puts his anvil down and says, that's it, my judgment is set forth. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can trick their way out of it, lie their way out of it, connive their way out of it, steal their way out of it, sneak away. No, you can't run and you can't hide. When judgment hits this country, when judgment falls, how many of you will be ready? How many of you will be on God in God's good graces when judgment falls? What are you going to do about that? Are you going to mend your ways now? Or are you going to wait as long as you can so you can fatten your pocket as, as thick as you can? On drugs, on alcohol, on prostitution, on X-rated videos, on pornography. How much do you have to do? How far down the pit do you have to go before your pocketbook is satisfied? Because it's usually all about money, pride, and power. How long do you have to be in that trick bag? 
See, you don't realize it. You think you got your calendar marked out. You got your itinerary written ahead for the next five or six years with the stock market, with the with the organizations that grease your palm while you turn a blind eye and let them get away with all kind of murders and crimes that you know they're committing. They should have been prosecuted for. But you got the power, baby, and they got the money. So you let them slide while you take a little teenager and put them in jail for life because they had one driving ticket too many. Or they got in a fight in school. You're going to use them and make them an example and ruin their life. But you let the real criminals go. That's the crap God's going to judge. That's what God's going to judge, y'all. There's a storm coming. I don't know if it's physical, figurative, or both, but there's a storm coming. And those of us who are in the secret place of the Most High God are hiding up under Him. He will be our refuge. He will be a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. But you, you have a lot to reckon with because of all of the deeds you've done. Willingly, carelessly, you could care less about how many lives are ruined as long as your pockets are fat. Your name is big. You got claim to fame. You got clout. People look up to you. There's that pride, that arrogance. Oh, yeah, you got it now, baby. But see, this is between time and time. When you get through with this little segment and God takes you to the real chapter of your, of your future, that's going to be never-ending torment. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Because if you don't, you will. I don't say you might. You will have hell to pay. Some of you relatives, you got family members. All these years, you believe what the Bible said. You agree with what God said about righteousness and holiness. But now you got a family member that's bent, going the other way. Totally against God's ways. They may not be against God, but their ways are. So now all of a sudden, you got to change your heart. Why do you have a change of heart? Because someone else chose a lifestyle that is diametrically opposed to God and his word. So what do you do? You become a confederate with that. And you come into agreement and alignment. Oh, well, God understands. I love you anyway. Yeah, well, that's fine. You can love them. You're their parent. You're their brother, sister, whatever you are. Their friend, whatever. But you're not to wink at their sins. You're not to accommodate their sins. Somebody sitting up there trying to find their next high. They're not feeding their kids but they're trying to get that next high. Their kids have to go through the alleys to find something to eat. They haven't eaten in three days cause you used to check up on your crack. So you go to a family member and family member walks with the Lord and they know the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. No, that family member ought to be taking care of them kids that you abandoned. Not your crack habit. See, we get it all twisted and backwards. God does not want us to associate ourselves with any form of sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. We know that. But we don't put a stamp of approval on it. And that's what too many in this world have done. 
You've been taking your kids to church, teaching them the word, praying with them, doing all the good stuff. And then one of them comes up and says, I've decided to walk this path. I've decided to walk that path. But because it's your child, well, God, I know God understands. They have such a good heart. They're so loving. Being loving does not excuse us from sin as much as you want it to. Yeah, you love them. Yeah, you have compassion for them. But you still stand on God's standards, not theirs. You don't switch horses in the middle of the stream because one of them horses belongs to your child. So now you change your whole direction in life. You change all your standards because somebody you love, somebody close to you, has gone the wrong way. So now you have to be understanding and compassion. No, the Bible didn't say that. The Bible didn't say you have to do all that. No, you pray for them to get it right. And you warn them about the consequences and leave it at that. You don't have to nag them. You don't have to nag them. You let the Holy Ghost convince them. But you plant the seed. One plants, another waters. It's only God that gets the increase. Now, listen to this. A lot of you, you go through life, you go through all these different interactions, Something somehow all hell breaks loose on you, and now you've got all these reasons to blow it, to go back to getting high. You got all these reasons why you got to get you a lay in the hay because you need some comfort. You got all these reasons why you got to go hit the gambling shack or go to Vegas and pull that one-armed bandit just one more time because your money's funny and your change is strange. You're not trusting God. You're trusting the elements of this world. The adult pacifiers this world offers you through the avenues of sin. And you're saying the whole, oh God, just forgive me, Lord, forgive me. You really think God's a patsy. I'm telling you, something is coming. A storm is brewing and a storm is, is revving up. I don't know when, but soon and very soon, something's going to hit a whole lot of folks up on their blind side. And it's going to be something either included with corona or it's going to be something that puts corona in the dust. Whatever it is, it's prayer time. It's time to repent. It's time to get rid of those old ways and throw all that crap, all your old crutches away, all your old diapers and pacifiers and everything that you've been sucking on and leaning on and messing up in. You need to get rid of it because as long as you keep the crap in your life, the crap will continue to perpetuate every time your nerves get bad. And see, some of y'all, the sad part is too many of you got a price. If somebody gives you the right amount of, of money, shows you the right offer, gives you the right contract, God just going to have to understand now, isn't he? Because this is your one time, this is your one claim to fame. If it means children have to die, if it means women have to be sold and abused, if it means boys have to be turned out and raped, doesn't matter to you. You ain't doing it. You just collecting the money, honey. So you think this world... <clears throat> You think America, let's stick with America for right now. You think America's okay. I was watching a movie the, the, other, the other night where this guy was walking down the street. His brother had committed crimes. He was studying to become an attorney. The cops constantly harassed him. Now, we would expect that here in America. But this was happening over in the UK. So it looks like this dilemma is all over this world. 
If you got a little color on your skin and you're trying to get ahead, somebody's going to be there to try to pull you down like gravity. Now, what I want to say about all that is we've got the penal system. We've got law enforcement. We've got judges. We've got governors. We've got presidents. We've got kings and queens in these different countries. And I'm telling you, God sees the treachery. He's not turned a blind eye. He sees the treachery. Some of you, you know, some of the people that are committing some of this treachery. You need to stay as far away from them as you would somebody with the blue blotted, the blue blotted plague. I can't even say it right. You need to stay away from these people as if death is all around them. And if you come within a certain vicinity, it'll be on you. Stay away from them as if it's that serious. Because it really is. Things are getting ready to go down. Folks are getting ready to be arrested from the top to the bottom. Crimes that have been committed for decades, some centuries with some families that have money and clout. Folks are going to start getting exposed left and right more than you've ever seen before. There are going to be a lot of penalties, a lot of answers to come up with. A lot of exposure. See, when God judges, he doesn't play. When he comes down hard, he is even more merciless than the people were that crucified his son. All I ask is that those of you who have fam family members who are caught up in mess, sit down and talk to them. Ask God to anoint you and prepare their hearts. Talk to them. Give them words of warning. Plead with them. Please, you could be saving a soul from hell. But don't wink at what they're doing. Don't laugh when they tell you what they just did. Don't give them that little nervous laughter because you're too uh, sheepish and skittish to come up with the truth for fear that they'll be mad at you. See, when God brings judgment, from what I read in scriptures, that enhances the kingdom. The body of Christ, people of God, start going forward with more and more power. So we have nothing to fear. But we just have to make sure that we stay in on we stay on the straight and narrow. Touch not the unclean thing. Don't associate yourself with the sins of this world. Don't hook up. Don't hook up and buddy up with the devil or the devil's people. Amen? You better hurry up and buddy up with God. That's the only out you got here. When this stuff starts breaking loose all over the place, you better be hooked up with God because that is your only defense and protection. Amen? Second Chronicles 714. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. While the country is going down in a handbasket, God can still heal your life and everything that pertains to you in the midst of it all. God bless you. I hope you got something from that. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you pour repentance all over your people, Father. That you give us a hunger and thirst for you and for righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. Help us not to play both ends against the middle. Help us not play church. 
Help us not play salvation. Help us not play tiddlywinks with you. And help us not treat you as a patsy or a bellhop. Don't walk with you when you don't do what we want you to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Help us take this time seriously. Amen.